want to welcome you to church. Praise God. How many of you had a wonderful week this week? Why don't you stand to your feet? We're going to just take a few moments and praise the Lord together. Find someone next to you and give them a wonderful smile. Give them a, 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 an elbow. Come on, tell them it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. What a great day to be alive. We want to welcome those who are joining us online. What a wonderful day to be alive. Jesus is Lord. Amen. And we want to celebrate together the presence of God. The scripture says, I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness. I will sing praises to the name of the Lord most high. That's Psalms chapter 7 verse 17. Psalms 33 says, praise the Lord with a harp. Sing unto him with the psalms and with the ten string instruments. Psalm 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Look at somebody say, I will praise the Lord at all times. But here's the best one. Psalms 44 says, in God I will boast all day long and I will praise his name forever. Come on, let's exalt the Lord together. You can lift your hands to the Lord this morning as we bless his name. The Bible says if you lift up Jesus, he will draw men unto himself. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just begin to bless his name right now. Exalt his name and magnify him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He is exalted. He is exalted. The King is exalted. And I... I will praise Him, He is exalted, forever exalted, and I will praise His name. He is the Lord, He is the Lord, forever His truth shall reign. Exalted, join us. Woo! He is exalted, the king is exalted. Woo! I will praise him. He is exalted forever. Exalted and I will praise his name. Come on, lift your hands.
shall reign Heaven and earth Rejoice in His holy name He's exalted He is exalted He is exalted this morning that declares that everything about me is about God. Look at somebody and say, there's no one else I live for but Jesus. My whole life is about him. Come on now. Nobody else. Why don't you put up your hands?
Melodious sound. Oh, come on. How many of you how many of you think how many of you know that God knows Kao? That's all you say? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. <laughs> so the truth is, there will be people from every tribe, every language, every nation. And with one accord, we will praise the name of the Lord Amen. most high. So this morning, listen to me. I want you to get your mother tongue on. Come on now. Get ready. When we sing, when we sing, when we sing a language that you identify with, you better come down here and dance. Are you ready? All right. Hallelujah. Come on. Tell your neighbor. Man, praise looks good on you people. Amen. The devil hates it when you praise. Oh, come on 
Tell your neighbor the devil hates it when you praise. I'm going to make him hate me some more. Oh, come on now. When Jesus came down, he came down from heaven. When he landed, he landed in Israel. When there was trouble, he came down to Africa. So we must praise him. Praise him with an African way. Come to again. When Jesus came down, he came down to So we must praise him. There was a king, oh, his name was Herod. All he wanted was to kill the children. But when they heard it, so we must praise him. This one, no one could kill him. No one could kill him. No one could touch him. No one could kill him. One more time. No one could touch him. No one could kill him. No one could touch him. So we must praise him. Praise him in an African way. Oh, there's one more. His name is Jesus. So we must praise him. Praise him in an African way. Are you getting loose? His name is Jesus. So we must praise him.
shall know all languages. That's the revelation right there. When we see him, <laughs> when we see him, the Bible says we shall be transformed and we shall be like him. There are so many treasures that God has prepared for us. For those of you who love the Lord, you know that when you began your relationship with Jesus, every passing day something new came. God always reveals his beauty in holiness. And so I want us to just take a few moments and worship him. We're going to minister this song to the Lord. And if it's new to you, I want you to just receive. I want you to follow the words and just get in the spirit. Because heaven has been set apart for you and I. And the Bible says, for thousands upon thousands of years, we shall worship. Some of you will be given harps. Bonus if you. If you don't know how to play the guitar, don't worry. When you get to heaven, you'll be able to play it. Praise the Lord. Come on now. <laughs> so let's just focus on the Lord and just bless his name this morning. He's worthy. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we bless your name. I just want to affirm what Pastor Chola just said. Mm. I just realized I've been born again 22 years. Oh, come on, Holy Ghost. And I still feel like I'm knowing him. Yeah, that's right. I don't know if I, anyone identifies with me. Yes. You can never know him. It never, me. yes, absolutely. You never get tired of the Oh, Lord. my God. That's never right. Never get tired that's of right. him. Never that's get right. tired of worshiping him. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. We just bless your name. Your you are speaking even before we sing a song. There's already a song he has put in your heart. Begin to let it out. Oh, he loves to hear your voice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Every new day, your glory. Love 
Come on, church. Just let go. Lift your hand. Worship. never be the same again. We shall never be the same again, Lord. Oh, we shall never be the same again. Father, tonight, this morning, sorry, Lord, we know that you're doing a new work in our hearts. Yes, Lord. This morning, Lord, every individual, every young child, every young man, every mature man, this morning, Lord, is living with a new dimension of you, Lord. Right now, Lord, under the sound of my voice, Lord, I prophesy that every man and woman, every boy and girl in this house today, Lord, is living with a new action of worship because we begin to understand, Lord, that your mercies are new every morning. We thank you, Lord. Father, this morning we declare that we shall never be the same again. Come on, church. Just begin to prophesy. Lay your hands on yourself. Begin to say, I shall never be the same again thank you Holy Spirit thank you for what you're doing in this place oh God Father we are not in a hurry Jesus name me. 
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I will never be the same again. How many of you believe that in the depths of their hearts? That ever since you made Christ, your life has never been the same. There's a temptation. Because of challenges of life. Because you may be facing a time of difficulty. It's so easy to look back and say, you know what? I'm going back. The scripture says, Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. This morning I'm here to encourage you who's feeling like giving up. Don't look back. He has the words of eternal life. The disciples said, where do we go from you? You have the words of eternal life. All these things are passing away, but your words will never pass away. So this morning, if you're here and you're full of worry, you're full of concern, because things are not going the way you expected them to go, I want to let you know that with Jesus you can make it. I want you to know in the depths of your heart that God is always totally in control of your life. Your life is in his hands. What better place could it be? He knows the end from the beginning. We don't have the privilege of seeing Uko Mali, but he's already there. Amen? So if you're here this morning and you're full of worry, I want you to lift your hand because I want to pray for you. You're so concerned. You're so worried about many things. Jesus said only one thing matters. And Mary chose that thing, which is to sit at the feet of Jesus. Come on, lift your hands. Don't be ashamed. We all have had those moments. The Bible says, weeping may endure for a night by joy, but joy comes in the morning. I want to let you know that your joy is just round the corner. Can I hear an amen? Your joy is just round the corner. Actually, your joy is already here. So you don't have to worry. Hallelujah. to minister to you as we sing this song you don't have to worry and don't you I can 
Jesus, I can break it. Oh, come on, I can stand. With him, I know I can stand. Team, you may take your seats. I love what Elisha said. Been saved 22 years. I've been saved 30 years myself. But Jesus is always fresh. If you're here and you've been saved two years and you think you want to give up, <laughs> you ain't seen nothing. Jesus is always fresh every day. If you have a checkbook, you can remove it right now, round about now. If you want to give by M-Pesa, our M-Pesa line is up there. I want you to give the biggest missions offering you've ever given. This is towards missions. Tanzania, Zambia, whatever it is that's in our heart to do as a church in the mission field, we want to do it. We want to help churches. We want to help people who are stranded and they're in the ministry. We have a church that's just about to launch somewhere in Same. We have another church recently that reached out to us and said, Pastor, can you guys help us? We are a kingdom church. Can I hear an amen? amen? So take out your checkbook. Write a big offering to the Lord for the work of the ministry. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. Your word says, if we delight in you, you will grant us the desires of our hearts. I pray for delight. May we delight in you and in the things of God. And Father, as a result, you will grant us the desires of our hearts. We desire to go. We desire to be used of you in the ministry. We desire to be used of you to bear fruit that will last. 
So we surrender all to you. As we give today, Lord, take our offerings, multiply them for the sake of the kingdom. May they bear fruit in our lives, some 30, some 60, and even 100 fold to the glory of God. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Are you ready for the word of God? Look at somebody and say, I'm ready. Well, oh yeah, children, all right. We're going to release our kids. All of our children, please go to your service upstairs or at the back. All our children and preteens, please make your way into your children's service. And that will be a blessing. Come on, let's appreciate all of these kids. Actually, we should, appreci- we should be appreciating the fathers who brought all these kids. <laughs> it's Father's Day. Are you ready for the word? Praise the Lord. Pastor Jemo is bringing the word of the Lord to us. Let's welcome Pastor James one more time as he brings the word of the Lord. Come on. Praise the name of Jesus. Are you alive? Are you blessed of the Lord? Awesome. It is good to be blessed of the Lord. It is good to be alive. And it's good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. Karibuni sana. As we take some time to celebrate what he is doing in our midst. So, we have been talking about going. Bwana asifiwe. Go and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you to. In fact, let's have that scripture. It's already there. I'd ask us to stand up and uh, read this scripture together. This is Matthew chapter 28, verses 18, 19, and 20. And it says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your word. This afternoon, as we share from your word, my Father, I pray that our hearts would be open, that our hearts would be like that good soil that embraces the seed and allows the seed to germinate and to bring forth much fruit. I pray that, Lord, we shall be not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word, my Father. And as we allow the word, my Father, to take effect in our lives, may we continue to be disciple makers in the kingdom in Jesus' name we pray, and everybody say amen. Amen. Awesome. You can have your seats. Pastor Chola talked about traveling to Tanzania. Going to the ends of the earth to minister, to preach and to teach and to raise up disciples. I love traveling. It's just something about traveling that... Uh, I don't know how to explain it, but for me, traveling is just an amazing experience. Whether it's traveling locally or traveling internationally, it's just an amazing thing. I remember the first time I was on a plane many, many years ago. My youth pastor, Pastor Abraham Jalachola, decided that the youth ministry has to go international. So easy to Alianza Kitambo. It's not now. These things are in his system. They've been there boiling. And so Pastor Chola decided, the youth pastors, we were four youth pastors and a team of about 30 young people. And we decided, you know what? We are going to Zambia. Zambia lazima ifunguke. Yeah. You will go there. Yes, in Jesus' name. And uh, we went and got our passports. We started saving money. We did all sorts of things to raise money. I mean, you imagine you have an opportunity. And now you're being told you're going to take a plane and go to Zambia. Oh, my goodness. We saved money. And then D-Day came. We went to the airport, excited. 
a team of 30 young people who had never been on a plane before. And then you put them in one plane. 30 young people who love doing aerobics on stage and somersaults in the air. I am telling you that people in that plane did not know what hit them. They didn't know who we were, but they felt who we were. Right. Dao, are you on that trip? Yeah. The moment they said you can unbuckle your seatbelts, not only did we unbuckle our seatbelts, but we also unbuckled ourselves from the seats. And we were all over. We were all over the plane. Oh my goodness. I keep wondering if we had mobile phones then to take selfies, what we would have done. But it was chaotic. And then we landed in Zambia, and instantly, Pastor Chola, Pastor Jemo, Pastor Nzimbi, and Pastor Wesley, we became millionaires. We became millionaires. When we went to the bank to change the money we had, because the Kenyan currency is so powerful, my friend, we left with millions. Pastor Chola was just gawiering us millions. By the way, Pastor Chola signed Kanja Mitamoja. He gave us millions. We were low dead, ready for action. And we had an amazing time in Zambia. And I remember, I think, the second last night, the second last day, if it, it was not the second last day, it was towards the end, we crossed over into Zimbabwe. <laughs> For lunch, Zimbabwe was just another territory. If you thought you were becoming a millionaire in Zambia, watch out in Zimbabwe. Who can not need wheelbarrow? We change ten thousand, and we do not need wheelbarrow to buy do. Because the exchange rate is just chaotic and crazy. But we had so much fun. I mean, interacting with people who speak a different language, interacting with people who have a very different culture. You know, I was telling the first service, one of the things I enjoyed about that trip is that the people in Zambia are like the people in Western Kenya. There's a chicken with every meal, born as if you were. Every meal has chicken. In fact, meat is more expensive than chicken. We had so much chicken, we came back, we did not want chicken. You come back and you just want kaugani na skuma, rosafi, maisha yende, raise of it is ingine, and if it is a dunia, atuzitaki anymore. You see, when you travel, you see possibilities, and also you appreciate what you have. You see possibilities. I remember the first time I went to Cairo, and I get out of the hotel room, and I am looking and I am seeing Volkswagens everywhere. I still have the video. They have Volkswagens. Volkswagens are the matrices. I was like a, a 12-year-old or a 6-year-old in a candy store, and you don't know which direction to look. You want this one, you want this one, as in they were everywhere. Interesting experiences. Traveling opening, opens up your eyes. Interacting with new cultures, interacting with new people, seeing another way of doing life. I remember the first time I went to Dubai, and I left the airport, and I stepped outside, and I thought something is wrong, and I went back into the airport. Because it felt like I got into a furnace. Imagine I stepped out and my glasses immediately, and I'm not exaggerating, yeah. immediately they were covered with mist. And I thought, what is happening? How do people live here? But one of the most amazing things for, for me for that trip in Dubai is when we got to the hotel, we packed our bags out, uh, up in the rooms, then we came downstairs, we were supposed to go somewhere. And we stood at the entrance of the hotel for about an hour and a half. And I'm not exaggerating. We were just looking at the vehicles. What? I felt cheated. The kind of, Michelle, you know what I'm talking about. The kind of vehicles we have here, I felt cheated. And they were just coming one after one. What wana shuka tunaizo maninizao za warabu warabu. You're wondering again, who is this? I mean, you look at the vehicles and you're thinking, what? My friend, apart from the Subaru, you're blue. Ah, my friend, we have got lots of ways to go, my friend. Why am I telling you about traveling? I'm telling you about traveling because Jesus said, in the scripture that we've just read, he said, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. We are supposed to go into 
every nation of this earth. And we are supposed to go there and we are supposed to make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything the Lord has commanded us to. God expects you to travel. I'll never forget, my wife once told me a testimony of this preacher who, you know, there was a conference that he was supposed to attend, but he didn't have money for the air ticket. He had a passport, but he didn't have money, and he went into prayer, and God told him, you're supposed to go for that conference, I want you at the airport. And the guy walked in obedience, akaenda kwa airport, amepanga line. You know the way you move one at a time. We are mehudumiwa. Both. Hapo ndi utajua kama imani yako ni ya binguni ya mani ya viu sasa. Anasonga too. When he was next in line to go to the counter, somebody appeared from Ukondani, one of the airport staff, came to him, tapped him and asked him, are you Mr. So-and-so? He said, yes. He says, I have got your ticket. God bless you. Na akapotea. Yes, it's for real. You know, we said all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And if he wants you there, I mean, he wanted Philip to minister to the Ethiopian. And then after that, Philip was supposed to go somewhere else. And after finish, Philip finished ministering to the Ethiopian eunuch, he disappeared. As in he disappeared. He appeared somewhere else. God is able to get you where you need to go because he's the one who said, go into all the nations and make disciples. How many people here have never been on a plane? Sichomi, atakwa saidia. Keta meniambien sichomi, keta sichomi. Nemi okoka. You know, I was telling the first service, and this is not part of the sermon, this is just an addition. I was telling the first service that sometimes we wait for opportunities instead of creating opportunities. For those of you who've lifted up your hands, can you save 10,000, Bob? Katen ke uneza, uneza, uneza wai katen ke? Mali. Kama uneza pata 10 k, uneza ingie tu apa airport, ro safi tu, pike vya tu zako rangi, uvai katraza kako kafiti, kadress suit, kako kapoa, ukai tu pia executive. Ujilipie tu tiketi yako ya kuenda coast. Tiketi ya kuenda coast ni donga api, thawa tano, thawa sita, thawa saba. E ujilipie tu, what will you have, sir? Now, usiseme wine. Usiseme wine na whiskey. Ukunywe juice. Disclaimer, ukunywe juice. Mtu usikia poa sana ukiuri. Anapita na ako katroli and then they ask you, what will you have? Unawana pia mina kuwaga mtu wa maana. Usizoe tu kuenda kiosk. Nani ngombe. Nani chapondondo unainuwa mkono wapana? <laughs> Jitrit pia. Katenza au uende Mombasa, ataka utaruli na basi ni saa, si ulipanda ndege. <laughs> Ama ni aje. So ketu tunawana sija choma, ni mewachanua. Sometimes you create the opportunities for yourself. I'll never forget the first time I went to the Mara. The first time I went to the Mara was courtesy of a good friend of mine. His name is Pastor Joel Abraham Mjala Chola. <laughs> One as few. Pastor Chola, we need to write a book. Our adventures are many. There's a group of people who came from the States for a missions trip. And we did missions with them the whole week and they wanted to go to the Mara after that. Pastor Chola said, come along, my friend. Mara. And we went to the Mara. Let me confess, it was my first and only time at the Mara. <laughs> Hata mi nitasiva kwa 10K. Yangu ni 20, tu lazima niende na wife. Jesse utajipanga. <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying all these things. They are not part of the sermon, but they haven't even begun my sermon. But it is well. We are talking about going into the world. But do you know that this statement, eh? Story gani? It's only bit of the world. Those are things of the world. 
Kwani mnafikiria mimi ni National Geographic? <laughs> Niwaambia hapa story za nini? Mara. So we went to the Mara. <laughs> and so one of the tents one of the tents had ladies. And if you know Pastor Joel Abraham Mjala Chola. So Pastor Chola called us and he said, let's go next to the tent and make noises like hippos. Uwe! Uwe! Watu karibu Rudy State na mgu. I'm telling you. But it was a glorious trip. It was an amazing trip. I still remember the details till today. So I thank the Lord that my life is connected to Pastor Joel Abraham Jala Chola. This was not the last statement that Jesus made before he ascended into heaven. I want us to look at Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Pastor Chola mentioned it in the first service. He also mentioned it in this service. It says, but you shall receive power. This is Jesus talking to his disciples. They've gone to the Mount of Olives. Jesus is just about to ascend back into heaven. And he tells them not to leave Jerusalem, tarry in Jerusalem. And then he tells them, when the Holy Spirit come, you shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And then from there, akachukuliwa, he went up, and the disciples remained there, statue, wondering, okay, as in amenda kuenda. Then the angel came and told them, why do you still stay up there? Vile amenda and vile atarudi, and then imfanya kazi. And they went into Jerusalem, and they tarried. But I want us to look at this scripture, because the question we are trying to answer today is, where do I go? Last week, we answered the question, why should I go? And we said we need to go because Jesus gave us the command to go. We need to go because the wages of sin is death. The world is perishing. We need to go because we are running on a clock. Time is running out and we need to go because it is also beneficial for us to go because when we finish the work, we will hear, welcome home, thou good and faithful servant. But today we are asking, where do I go? The world is so big. How can I go to Tanzania and I've never left Nairobi. Kuna watu wapa hawajawai toka Nairobi. It's true. There are people here who've never left Nairobi County. There are people here who only know Nairobi County. Now Shago, upper banana. Ama Limuru. There are other people, pali wanaishi Nairobi ndiyo Shago. So you've never experienced another county. So even thinking about another nation is just unbelievable. Thinking about another continent is just unthinkable. And so you wonder, how do I begin this? Where do I go? Where do I begin? That's the question we want to answer today as we talk about where should I go and how should I begin? Jesus tells the disciples, tarry in Jerusalem because you need power. You remember he told them to go into the world and make disciples of all nations, but here he's telling them, before you start, wait. Wait. Gari haina petroli. Lazima gari kuena petroli. Because you need the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit to fulfill the Great Commission. Because the Great Commission is about changing lives. Bringing dead people back to life. Only the power of God can do that. Because the people in the world are dead in their sin and they need life. He came that we may have life and even life more abundantly. And so, the Holy Spirit has to empower you to go. And we see the disciples waiting. They waited in the upper room. And the Bible says on the day of Pentecost, they were together in one accord. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, the Holy Spirit fell. And they saw like tongues of fire on their heads. And the explosion happened and they went out, and the men were wondering, and these Jews, why can we hear them speaking our languages? Because they were speaking various tongues and languages from other nations. And the people thought they were drunk, and Peter seized the opportunity, and he said, these men are not drunk. This is that which was spoken of by the prophet long ago. And he preached a sermon 
3,000 people came to their number. And those 3,000 people, the Bible said they continued steadfastly in the apostles' teaching, in the breaking of bread, in fellowship, in prayer. Every day they met, 3,000 people. That's why Pastor Chola was saying, if you're not in a fusion, you're missing out. Because those 3,000 people were not meeting somewhere in a mega church. They were meeting in homes. From temple, from house to house, temple. House to house, temple. Every day they met. And the Bible says the Lord continued to add to them daily those who are being added to the faith. The power of the Holy Spirit. The sad reality is this. Many Pentecostals have reduced the power of the Holy Spirit to speaking in tongues and rolling on the floor. The more weird you are, the more anointed you seem. Roho ameshuka. It's like roho akishuka, lazima kuwena chaos. Watu wajichapanisha huko kwa ukuta. Watu wa rolapa, tunawakimbiza tuna maleso. Have you seen those ninis on TV? Ashes wanakuwaga tu, maze. Na leso. And I keep wondering why it's always the women who are rolling on the floor. That's a sermon for another day. Edit that one out of the video. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit shall come upon you to be witnesses. The Holy Spirit comes upon you and I so that we can be witnesses. Where when is Shahidi? Have you ever called, been called upon to be a witness in a case? I was telling the first service back in the day there used to be a program called Vyoja Mahakamani. One of my favorite actors was Tama Bin Tama. T T in brackets. It was a very hilarious show. The cases were just unbelievable. And I used to think it's comedy until the first time I had to go to court. Kuna sikunlishikwa. Because my car had two colors instead of one. And I refused to give the traffic policeman something to eat. And so I had to go to court to plead my case. And we went to court early, so we got the opportunity to listen to other cases. And it was Vyoja Mahakamani. I thought I would hear somebody kill somebody. No. Ujama Aliba Kukuyangu. Yeah, those were the cases I was hearing. I mean, interesting things. You, you contain yourself because you want to laugh. To cut a long story short, our time came. We were going to be like, 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 Unakubali mashtaka, unakubali, unakubali, haya. Huko na beile, ya pesa ngapi, elfu tano, toeni, toeni, toeni. Tukalipa, tukaishia, huu, miyo story ikaisha. Hawa ingine, sijuo liba kiwe kifanya nini. A witness is somebody who gives an account of what they experienced, what they had, what they saw. You shall be witnesses unto me. Tell people what you've heard me say. That is why it says, teach them to observe everything I have taught you. So be a witness, tell people what I have said. Be a witness, tell the people what you have seen. You remember when John the Baptist was in prison before he was beheaded and he was having second thoughts and he sent his disciples to Jesus to find out, are you the one who was to come or should we wait for another? And what did Jesus say? Go back and tell him what you see. Tell him what you see. The blind eyes are being opened, the lame are walking. That's the testimony. Tell him that. We are to be witnesses. There's a very interesting story in the book of John chapter 9. John chapter 9 tells the story of a gentleman who was born blind. And he had an encounter with Jesus. And Jesus spit on the ground and made some mud and applied on his eyes. But they will never forget this one time we were in service. I don't know, Pastor Chola, if you remember this. And people had been called to be prayed for. And we used to have a sound guy who used to wear thick spectacles. 
very thick spectacles. And so he went for prayer. And people were prayed for, people were prayed for. What were Karilisi or Karudi Kuka? Him, he was just there crying. He just remained there. And he said, God has told me to tell the senior pastor to spit in my eyes. <laughs> and I will be healed. You tell me if you're the senior pastor. <clears throat> <clears throat> What do you do? <laughs> Don't pull such a stunt if... Let me not say that. <laughs> but the pastor spit in his eyes. The pastor actually, two, two. Receive, two. Receive, two. And the guy from that day on, Hakuva Miwani. Oh, yeah. Hakuva Miwani. It is according to your faith. Yeah. This man, Jesus, spit on the ground, made some mud, applied on his eyes, like a mambi and a ukajioshe. So we pick it up from verse 24, John 9, 24. It says, so for the second time they called a man who had been blind and said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, whether he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? The blind man did not know any verse. The blind man did not know many things. The blind man knew one. He said... This one thing I know, I was blind, now I see. Whether he is a holy man or not, I don't know, I don't care. I will tell you my testimony. I was blind, now I see. The question is, what one thing do you know? When it came to his relationship with Jesus and his interaction with Jesus, he knew one thing. And he was able to share it. What one thing do you know? You know, sometimes we say, I don't know a lot of scriptures. I've not been saved for a long time. What one thing do you know? Because we have been called to be witnesses. If Jesus was on trial and they called you in as a witness, atachiliwa ama atafungwa. Let me ask that again, slowly. If Jesus was under trial and you are called in as a witness, would he be locked up or would he be let free? Would your testimony be sufficient to prove that he is who he says he is? Be a witness unto me. In Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria and to the ends, of the earth. Let's bring that scripture again. I want to ask a couple of questions. Acts 1 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Who is talking? Who is talking? Jesus. Who is Jesus talking to? Okay. Jesus is talking and he's talking to his disciples and he's saying, but you, my disciples, shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, my disciples, and you, my disciples, shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem. Pause. When they're talking, or rather when he's talking to them, where are they? Where are they? So he's telling them, don't leave Jerusalem. Because the Holy Spirit will come upon you right here in Jerusalem. And the Holy Spirit is coming upon you so that you can be witnesses unto me. But you begin in Jerusalem. Before you think of Judea, you have to cover Jerusalem. Before you think of Samaria, you have to cover Jerusalem. Before you even think of the ends of the earth, you have to cover Jerusalem. Jerusalem is where we always begin. 
Your Jerusalem is where you live. Your Jerusalem is where you work. Your Jerusalem is your family. Your Jerusalem is your neighborhood. Your Jerusalem is your school and your college. That is where you begin. Let me ask you, Jesus, what did Jesus come to do? He came to seek and save the lost in Israel. He came to seek who? Where? Mbona aku kam Kenya? Mbona alipiga tu stories zake Israel, maisha ikakuwa ngumu akakaa Egypt alafu tena akarudi? He started where? He started at home. And he raised disciples at home. And he commissions disciples to go. So even Jesus started at home. Where is Samaju who come down south? Out of Okoka. You get? So we have to begin at home. Nairobi has got 4.8 million people. 4.8. The last census tells us that over 80% of the people in Kenya affiliate themselves with the Christian religion. Pentecostals, Evangelicals, Catholics, SDAs, at a moment we are Christians. 80%. Statistics will tell you that less than 25% of Nairobi goes to church. Less than 25% of Nairobians go to church. Statistics will even tell you of those who go to church, probably less than 10, if not 5%, are actually born again. The greatest mission field is not in China or India. It is your next door neighbor. Nairobi has got 4.8 million people, which is the largest church in Nairobi. As in Church Moja, not branches, just like he destined in Church Moja. How many people can the largest church sit? I think the largest church should be Winners Chapel. How many people does it sit? 30,000. Four point eight million, thirty thousand. It's the biggest. Na hakuna ingine kama yo. The next one sits how many? About ten. And then from there, you have two thousand, three thousand sitters. Three hundred kama destiny. Five hundred fifty. Out of four point eight million people. The greatest mission field in your E. The Bible says, open your eyes, the fields are white with harvest. Hapatu umumu. But you know, the greatest or the challenging place, the most challenging place sometimes to win uh, souls and make disciples is at home. Home ground. By the way, even Jesus had difficulty when he went home. There's a scripture in Matthew chapter 13, verses 54 to 58. It says, when he had come to his country, he taught them in their synagogue so that they were astonished and said, Aya, where did this man get his wisdom and these mighty works? Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? I have always wondered, why did Jesus have to have a brother called Judas? Why? I think I'll ask Joseph. Joseph and Simon. Joseph and Mary. But they say Kikulato King Wonimwako. Anyway, his sisters, are they not with us? Where did this man get all these things? So they, off- they, were, they were offended at him, but Jesus said to them, A prophet is without honor except in his own country and in his own house. Now he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. 
at home in a hard because people knew you. They don't know you. They knew you. At home, people knew you, and they are stuck to the old they knew because they don't recognize that something has happened, and behold, all things have been made new. They know the color of those days. They know the Emmanuel of those days. And so they wonder, Unatushonini, what are you telling us? It becomes hard to minister to people because they already have a perception of what they believe you are. And so they don't believe your message. Isn't he the carpenter's son? Where did he get this wisdom? At home is hard, but we have to begin at home. I remember the first time I ever preached at home. I grew up in Burufes too, house number 717, Capsiliate Court. I was born in California. See Lea Maju. Ia Calif Records, Ia Apa. Block A2. That's where I was born. When I was four years old, we moved to Buru. Mzeal decided, Maze, what's the name of Pandishangazi? To Kenda Buru. And so I grew up in Buru all my primary school, secondary school, college. I'm born and bred in Buru Buru phase two. So people in Buru know me. Then I finished college. A certain lady gave me an ultimatum that if I want to marry her, I move out of my mother's house and stay alone for one year. And because I was so in love, I moved out. Lived alone for a year, got married, joined the ministry. And then one day, a good friend of mine in the ministry, his name is Pastor Joel Abraham Jalachola. He had a rema. This friend of mine, when he has a rema, you have to hear it, whether you like it or not. He has a rema, and he got a rema, and he got all the boys together. We were, we have, he had three disciples, Pastor James, Pastor Wesley, and Pastor Nzimbi. And so our youth pastor had a rema, and he asked Pastor Nzimbi, Pastor Nzimbi, your dad is the archbishop of the SEK Church of Kenya. He lives in a mansion next to State House. As in Akifuka Barabara, even you go to Kibaki. Back then, I think it was Kibaki. Why are you still paying rent? Yeah, it is very biblical. In my father's house, there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. Ah, Pastor Nzi got the rema, packed his bags together with Rita. They moved into their father's house. Pastor Jemo, your mom moved to Kericho. There's a house in Buru. Your younger brother is living there alone, and he doesn't even have a job. Pastor Jemo saw the light, packed my bags with my Maureen and my Daryl. We moved back to Buru. Pastor Chola moved back to South B with Pauline and Duncan. So I was back in Buru for another 10 years. So basically, I'm trying to tell you that people in Buru know me left, right, and center. And so one time we were preparing for this major event in the city that was bringing about the youth in the city. And we were going from one neighborhood to another, doing what we called commotions. Dao, you remember? And so Pastor Chola decided we are going to Buru. And guess who is going to preach? You are going to preach because that's your neighborhood. So we went to Buru, we set up our stage. Akina Dau and Akina Michelle and Akina Jonah. Who Jonah no na pakishika shika camera? He's an amazing dancer, by the way. He danced his heart, his way into into Michelle's heart. They danced into each other's hearts, and so we did our thing. And then I was called to preach, and I went on stage and I started preaching, and the people started gathering because who is in Jemo? Jemo and Ezra Ubiri, as in Jemo, Jemos can stand before people and speak. One of the things you may not know about me is that I'm actually an introvert. 
I like myself and I like being alone. It comes naturally. I can survive alone. Me, I'm okay. So growing up, I was very quiet. I didn't go into any extremes. I was just a chilled out guy. So for them to see me on stage with a microphone preaching was something else. How? When? First of all, he is a pastor in Lighthouse. How? Since when? So I preached myself out, my friend. I preached a message. <laughs> and if you talk to some of the people who were in the youth, they will tell you uh, some of my messages were harsher than they are today. Martha, you know what I'm talking about, and Michelle. Come on, Otaka, kunywa, kunywa. Kunywa mbaka itoke koma pua, kunywa. That's what I would tell guys in high school. You want to drink? Unataka kufuta bangi? Vuta. Mbaka itoke koma kucha, vuta. Don't just do it half-heartedly. Just go in and do it completely. And so there was a guy there who had sung a song. And this song was very popular. A lot of young people were dancing to the tune of this song. It was not a very good song. What was butchery wal kwa naipenda? What was butchery na mafisi? They like this. This song was called Manyake. All sizes. Manyake kama prizes. And I looked at this guy. He was seated like where you are and I'm here. And I looked at him and I started talking to him. And asking him, why would you sing a song like that? You're taking our young people to hell. You are a perverted man. And he was there, seated at the counter in his father's bar. And they actually were planning to run us out of town. Him and his group were actually planning to come and beat us up. But we preached the message, and we finished the message, and we packed up, and we left. It is hard to preach at home, but we have to start in Jerusalem because people in Jerusalem need the Lord too. That's right. The question is, if you preached in Jerusalem, would people listen or would people not listen because of your character in Jerusalem? You know, it's easier to be saved in Judea and Samaria right. and to the ends of the earth, but in Jerusalem they know you. Because they live with you every day. If you preach to your watchman, I usually say, if you want to know if people are born again, ask the house girl. The house girl knows if people are born again. House girl, house girl, Anajua. Jerusalem is where you begin. I want to give you four things as I finish, because our time is up. Four things that you can do To be a witness in Jerusalem. Just four things that you can do to be a witness in Jerusalem. The first thing is live a holy life. Live a holy life. Let your life speak in Jerusalem. St. Francis of Assisi said, preach the gospel at all times and when necessary, use words. If somebody was to observe you from a distance, would they come to the conclusion that you're born again? Or if people hear you're born again, they get shocked. Because your actions and what you're saying does not align. What testimony do you have in Jerusalem? Are you living a holy life in Jerusalem? that others can look at you and say there's something different. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, do not be conformed any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Are you renewed? Are you transformed? Is your life different than the lives of other people? This week on my devotions, I've been looking at excellence, and we've been looking at the story of Daniel, the story of Samuel, and the story of Joseph. When Daniel was about to be promoted by the king, the governors and the satraps tried to find a reason why 
he should not be promoted. Something that he had done that they could bring against, the, against him to the king, they could find nothing. They went through his life with a comb, but they could not find nothing. He was not corrupt in his dealings. He was as straight as an arrow. And they realized the only way that we can find cause is to come up with something that is against his religion and his beliefs. Because he is so committed to his God, if we come against him from that angle, we will find something. Samuel, when Saul was about to be anointed as king, looked at the children of Israel and asked them, have I stolen from any of you? Have I received a bribe from any of you? Have I stolen any of your donkey or your ox? If yes, say now, I will repay you. And the children of Israel said, you have not done any of those things. Talk about a testimony. Joseph, nothing could be found against him. And if you notice, all three men were in leadership positions with great resources under their authority. And they were excellent in everything they did. They were excellent in their worship. They were excellent in their character. They were excellent in their work. When the people in your Jerusalem look at your life, can they see God in you? What testimony do you have in your neighborhood? In your place of work, there's a question I was asking this week and asking, if you both left everything under your care, will the company thrive? Ama itafungwa. Potiphar left everything under Joseph's care. The guy who was in charge of the prison left everything under Joseph's care. Pharaoh left the kingdom under Joseph's care. And everything that was left in Joseph's care thrived. Why? Because he was excellent. He had a testimony. Joseph and Daniel had such a testimony that even though they were in a foreign land serving foreign kings, the kings came to the conclusion that the God of Daniel, the God of Joseph, he is God. He is the God that ought to be served. Why? Because these two men had such a testimony in the way they handled themselves, in the way they did their work, in the way they interacted with others, that they were witnesses for God. Am I a witness for God in my Jerusalem? The second thing is invite, before you invite, pray for them. Pray for the people in your Jerusalem. Pray for the lost. Last year, we had a challenge. We were doing 40 days salvation challenge with evangelist Magangi. And we took 40 days to pray for one individual in our family that we were believing God to get saved. For 40 days, 15 minutes every day, we would pray. And the interesting thing that came out of that is that testimonies began to flow. And the testimonies were interesting It was not testimonies of, oh, he got born again. No, it was testimonies like, he is now very interested in the Bible. He's been asking me questions about the Bible from nowhere. He's very interested in prayer. He wants me to teach him how to pray. One lady said, my husband, since we got married, so prayers work. And we are not just praying for the sake of praying. We are praying and also talking to them. We are praying and showing ourselves as a testimony of what God can do. The third thing is invite them to church. Invite them to your fusion. If you're not part of a fusion, you need to be part of one because a lot of things happen in fusions that will help you in your walk with God. I've shared this before, that I, get, I got born again because I was invited for a fusion. I went into a fusion and I connected with people who were real and I could see God doing something in their lives and I became part of it. And getting born again was so natural, no one forced me to. It's harder for some people to come to church, but it's easier for them to come to your house for some shai. Just make some rashai and invite them. Grill some meat and invite them over. And have conversations with them. Let your life rub off onto them. Pray for them. When you pray for somebody once, they will always remember you when they have trouble. Draw them pole pole. Invite them to service. 
Let them come here and hear the word. So that this word can have an impact in their lives. And then lastly, testify. Testify. First Peter 2, 15 and 16. But sanctify the Lord in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. Testify. Testify. Be a witness. Speak. Share your testimony. One of the things that a lot of people in the church of Jesus Christ today don't know how to do is to share a testimony. I can guarantee you, if I ask for somebody to come and share a testimony here now, we will wait for about 10 minutes. Because to be honest, majority of us don't know what to say. Because we have been cultured to think, unless the testimony is dramatic, it's not a testimony. Unless you are a witch, and now you are born again, it's not a testimony. Unless you are a witch, you are a witch. Unless you are a witch, you are a witch. You are a witch, you are a witch. 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 We love those dramatic ones, and because of that, a lot of people exaggerate their testimonies. Now you're bearing false witness. Instead of bearing witness, you're bearing false witness because you're trying to make the testimony juicer. You're trying to help Jesus look good, but he doesn't need your help. I want to challenge you. Last week, I challenged people to use their social media platforms to share scriptures and something, just something. And I'm so glad all over the place I could see scriptures. People are sharing. That is amazing. Let's keep doing that. But this week there's another challenge. Learn how to share. Can you share your testimony in three minutes? Three minutes. When I got saved, in those days, when you greeted a fellow believer, you had to share a testimony. It was not Sasa Fit, uh uh. In fact, Sasa Fit was unthinkable. It's an abomination. It was Buana Asifiwe. Amen. Buana Amenilinda. God has been with me this week. I was reading this scripture in the book of 2 Timothy, and this is what the Lord spoke to me, and today I just feel energized and encouraged because I know the Lord is with me. How are you doing? That was the greeting. Watch yeah. another squeeze is otherwise. <laughs> otherwise, are you still born again? Learn to share your testimony. What is God doing in your life? As I told you earlier on, me, my testimony is not dramatic. It's not. Me, I'm just a regular guy. I was not number last, and then God touched me, I became number one. Neither was I number one. Me, I was just average. I didn't go into extremes. I've never been drunk a day in my life. I don't know how it feels like to be drunk. And by the way, my dad and my mom were not church people, and my mom and my dad used to drink. They were not drunkards. They used to drink. Big difference. They used to drink responsibly. So alcohol was in the house from time to time. But I've never been drunk my whole life. Never. See, I see Jaribu. Nisha Jaribu Changa. Nisha Jaribu Busa. Nisha Jaribu Whiskey. Nisha Jaribu Beer. Nisha Jaribu Fegi. I used to work in BAT when I finished high school. My first job. B.A.T. But my body refused these things just because of my nature. Ata mambo ya kuenda out once in a while. I think when I dated Maureen, I took her out maybe two or three times. And we dated for five years. Because you go out, you dance, you dance. Because you're not drinking, you dance, you dance, you dance. Nakale ka fanta kamoja, you dance. Asubui. Asubui nafika umechoka, hauna do, 
kwani ilikuwa lazima si ningekaa tu umnilale what what is the fun in that me i've never understood even my wife if you talk to my wife she will tell you, even for her she has never understood how people go out to do what to dance the whole night she dance yetu kwa hao ukichoka bed iko tu hapo kisikia nja fridge iko tu hapo you don't have to spend i mean so my testimony has no extremes but i can share my testimony i know how to share my testimony i can tell people what god has done for me i can tell people my journey with god the kind of things that god has done for me god has come through for me when i had no rent and we had been thrown out of the house but through pastor Joel Abraham Jalachola even though he didn't know he instigated something that God used to ensure that I get the rent that I needed I don't even think he knows that story I have been at that place where I don't know which direction to go is it this job or is it this job and God has guided me that's a testimony I've been at a place where I never thought I would go to another country and God opened the door for me as a testimony. And so one of the things I have learned to do is to look at my life and pick stories. Pick stories. Our wedding we had no money. For those of you who know my story, I was actually walking to my wedding. Nilitoa koti nikaibeba koti yangu ya white. I was dressed like this but now with a white coat. I've been having this look for many many years. So I just removed my coat and I was actually walking to my wedding happy as I can be that before the end of the day who dem star I'm sindikiza tena. Boss. Ati jioni na msindikiza mam. Jioni na msindikiza. Kwa stage tunasimama hapo for 3 hours. Makanga wa 5 8 walikuwa natujua hao wacha nani nao. Time yao bado. Kwa tunafika kwa stage 4 anapanda ma 3 7. Iyo maisha imeisha. Whether there's food in the wedding, I don't care. Whether I was carried by a limo, I don't care. My agenda is mambo ya kusindikizana ni memaliza. So me, I was working for my wedding. My wedding was a miracle. Young people, if you're planning to get married and you're stressed, come, I tell you my story. Our budget was 48,000. Everything, everything, everything. Venue, nguoza maids, keki, everything. Misi kufangu ompia kwa wedding yangu. Zanini, kwani zinalikuwa hapo new clothes. <laughs> no. Azi andikagwi? Why should I buy new shoes? Ni kona viatu na zijararuka. Where the last time ulienda wedding, uliangalia viatu za groom. Mtu angalia viatu za bride. So, viatu za bride, the most expensive thing I bought in that wedding was those shoes na hiyo dress ye lazima akaepoa mi naweza survive mi kama sina dinga ni sawa kama tu viatu ni tule tuse my trouser was not new the only new thing was the pearl neck you pearl neck see new maze pia naweza kuaibisha naweza ka hivi coating ile ya kikomba Koti nilienda kikomba mtu wangu hakuna shimo ya kikomba sijui kabai kakoti kangu ka white nikakapeleka white rose vip dry cleaners kakachapo msasa kakapigwa pasi nikatoklezea watu wakakula pilau na ikabaki as a testimony it was god's faithfulness because some people were saying why do a wedding just move in together we said no we may not have the money but we will do a wedding. That's a testimony. When you look back at your journey, what has God done for you? Those are the things you need to package and write down. If I meet somebody who has no rent, I have a story to tell them. If I meet somebody who has no idea where the next meal is going to come from, I have a story to tell them. If I meet somebody who's wondering, I have a story to tell them. If I meet somebody who's confused about whether to go into ministry or to stay in their job, I have a story to tell them. 
If I meet somebody who's disappointed because they did their best and they still lost their job, I have a story to tell them. Why? Because I package my stories. I package them. I package them. I package them. I have packaged, I have packaged them. <laughs> and I tell these young ministers, what's an Araka ministry? Maligoda me connect. Shikilia tu apo. Eh, shikilia uskuwa na Araka. Yakuenda kuanzi shaka kiosk kaku apo injen liskes na ito kiosk. Kakiosk kaku apo injen ziuka ministry. No, relax. Stay put. Be tempted. I'm going overboard. We need to pray. So when you come up, this is the homework for this week. Because every someone needs a practical application. Learn how to share your testimony in three minutes. And the three aspects of your testimony are the life you used to live before Christ, how you met Christ, and how your life has changed after Christ. Now, Otero wa testimony yako si wewe. Otero wa testimony yako ni Christ. Because he's the game changer. Stand before a mirror. Share your testimony to yourself. Jiskize unasema nini. Write it down. Master your testimony. Master it. So that you can share it with somebody in three minutes. And then meet somebody in your Jerusalem this week. Your brother, your sister, your father, your mother, your neighbor, your watchman, the shopkeeper. And up kwa duka. Kabla andike kwa ile kitabu ya maziwa. Watu wa kitabu ya maziwa si mnajijua. Inaandikwa kwa kwa kitabu, alafu nalipa mwisho wa mwezi. Tuko wengi. So kabla kuandikie kama anaandika muambie, have I ever told you? How I got saved. Share with them how you got saved. Not so that they can get saved, no. So that they can know. That this one thing I know. I was here. I met him. I am here. Na kwa hayo machache, nipatia maziwa, nikapikia watoto chai. Let's stand up on our feet as we finish our service this morning, or rather this afternoon. You shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem. For those who stood up, who want to go to Zambia, and you want to go to South Africa, and you want to go to India, it is a good and a noble thing. But before you go to India and South Africa, begin by going into your neighborhood. Begin by talking to your family. Let them know what God is doing in your life. And please understand... We don't save people. We are just witnesses. And those who believe our testimony and they get born again, we begin the journey of discipleship with them. So not everybody will fancy your testimony. Not everybody will get born again. But it doesn't mean that you stop sharing your testimony. Learn to share your story. No one can share your story like you because you are the main character in there. And no one can dispute your story. Because this one thing I know. Where una dispute? Ulikuwa na mini kifukuzo kwa hao? Where una semani uongo? Why are you there? You were not there. Did you know what I was going through? Did you know what I was feeling? So your testimony and your story is the tool that God has given you to reach out to nations. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. And we thank you, Lord, that you have empowered us with the Holy Spirit. Unlike the disciples in the book of Acts chapter 1, we are not starting in Jerusalem to wait for the Holy Spirit because he already came. And he is already in our lives. So we have already been empowered from on high to be witnesses. I pray that, Lord, you will teach us to be witnesses in Jerusalem. That, Lord, in our Jerusalem, we will not be ashamed of the gospel. In our Jerusalem, we will declare the goodness of God unashamed. That we will be able to declare, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that the people in our homes, the people in our workspaces, the people in our businesses, the people we interact with on a daily basis, the people we go to school with, that Father, they will know our testimony 
and the goodness of God in our lives. Your word tells us, taste and see that the Lord is good, his mercies endure forever. We have tasted, we have seen, and now even as the song says, we want to go and tell it on the mountains, over the hills and everywhere, that Jesus is born in our hearts and he has changed us and transformed us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Pray that, Lord, even as we look at our lives and learn to share our story, give us the right words to use. Open up our eyes to see the opportunities this week to be able to share our testimonies with those in our cycles in the mighty name of Jesus. In everything we do, may you receive all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say the good loud, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This one thing, I I know. Find that one thing and don't be afraid to share it. Because that one thing will change lives. This afternoon I want to declare to you that you are a great nation. Your name is great. I declare that you are blessed to be a blessing. Blessed are those who bless you. And cast are those who cast you. All the people in the world shall be blessed through you. The God of your fathers Abraham, Isaac and Jacob increase you today a thousand times. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord bless you as he has promised. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and do you good. The Lord turn towards you and give you peace. You have the keys to the house of David. What you shut, no one can open. And what you open, no one can shut. So you are blessed as you come in. You are blessed as you go out. You are blessed in the city and you are blessed in the field. The work of your hands is blessed. The fruit of your womb is blessed. Your stores are blessed. You are a king and a priest. You are the head and not the tail. You are a prophet and a builder. You are the first and never the last. Have yourselves an amazing week. Hallelujah.